Good morning, my name is Josh from Cyclone Solace, and today we're going to be taking a look at a developing tropical low or cyclone in the Gulf of Carpentaria and the Arafura Sea, which is now increasing in chances on the forecast. Then we're going to take a look at the developing Coral Sea tropical low and talk about some significant rainfall that's possible around the Gold Coast, the Sunshine Coast and Brisbane. Then we'll take a more general look at the nation's weather, all of that plus more coming up in today's weather update for April 18th, 2024. We're going to start things off up north with this developing tropical low, this mess of thunderstorm activity, which is north of Thursday Island in the Gulf of Carpentaria. If this isn't your cup of tea, then make sure to skip around in the video chapters in the description to find out your forecast for your location. But we will be starting things off up here. It is still a convective bubble bath north of the Cape York Peninsula, and it's going to remain like this for the foreseeable future. However, some organization can be expected over the coming 24 to 48 hours, with its chances of becoming a tropical cyclone peaking this weekend, Saturday and Sunday, before they start to dissipate on Monday. But taking a look at the system right now, I would give this a pretty hot chance of becoming a tropical cyclone, just considering uh, the amount of thunderstorm activity and convection that it is throwing up right now. I reckon there's still a 40 or 45% chance, uh, uh, still a greater chance than not that it won't become a cyclone, but there is still a relatively good chance this system does impress us and become a Category 1 strength tropical cyclone at some point in its life. You can see we've already got a defined low pressure area on the forecast model situated around Thursday Island and that's reciprocated amongst the wind observations with winds out of the northwest uh, 11 kilometers an hour right now at Mopa International Airport um, on Papua New Guinea or in fact on the Indonesian side of New Guinea and then 25 kilometers an hour at Thursday Island Horn Island Airport out of the east so we do have some pretty defined rotation starting to happen uh, here in the Torres Strait, which is looking quite good for this system, and some strong winds as well. We're talking up to 33 kilometers an hour around Cape Wessel, which is way out of the way of the storm center. Um, and yeah, I mean, around the center of the storm, you're probably looking at around winds 50 to 55 kilometers an hour, and some very heavy rainfall, which we will touch on a little bit later on in the video. But Thursday Island has picked up over 100 millimeters in the past 24 hours, with a lot more rainfall expected to come from this system as well. It will continue to organize throughout Thursday and Friday before getting itself over the more open waters Saturday in the uh, Gulf of Carpentaria. And as I said, Saturday into Sunday, so Saturday afternoon, will be its greatest chance of becoming a tropical cyclone if it ever is going to become one. But it doesn't look like conditions are going to be as good for the system as they are now. It'll likely be finding high levels of wind shear by the looks of things, probably around 20 knots or so around the storm center out of the northeast. So it won't be too uh, good looking on that part. And I don't think mid-level humidity is going to be too good for the storm either but we will just take a look at that uh, and confirm that yeah i do believe mid-level humidities for the storm itself could be better uh there's gonna be a lot of dry air towards the southern side of the system but i guess where the storm is located or going to be located 70 to 80 percent that is fine for the system just provided it doesn't wrap in any dry air from the northern territory because that would be really bad news for the tropical cyclone if it does get to cyclone status but it does look like only wind shear is going to be standing in the way of of this system at its time or well, at this time uh, with wind shear values for around 20 to 30 knots out of the northeast which isn't horrible for the tropical cyclone but it will inhibit some significant intensification in the Gulf of Carpentaria and also not to mention the fact that we're now getting later on into the year uh, the sea surface temperatures are just starting to fall off a little bit in the Gulf of Carpentaria 28 29 degrees Celsius still very much warm enough for tropical cyclone activity but 29 degrees is not as much energy as compared to 30 one degree Celsius. I mean, um, it, it, you could think of it like the Richter scale. A one degree increase in sea surface temperatures is probably like 10 times as much fuel for a tropical cyclone to take advantage of. And in this case here, uh, the differences in sea surface temperatures mean that there is a whole magnitude less uh, in terms of energy in the Gulf of Carpentaria for this tropical low or tropical cyclone to take advantage of. But again, we will wait and see on what this system does. In terms of peak wind gusts from this tropical cyclone, it's going to be in the next five days. We'll take a look at the next five days. Peak wind gusts probably only going to be around 70 or 80 kilometers an hour. It's not going to be a strong system by the looks of things. Some stronger wind gusts could be expected on the Gulf of Carpentary coastline down towards Mornington Island. 
and over Groot Island and Cape Wessel as well. Uh, but again, nothing crazy in terms of wind gusts beyond 100 kilometers an hour, and that is also reciprocated amongst forecast models. If they're going to load in today, yeah, GFS expecting peak wind gusts of around 85 or 90 kilometers an hour, and I believe the Axis G3 model not expecting too much in terms of wind gusts either. Um, yeah, probably only around a f uh, 70 or so kilometers an hour. So nothing crazy in terms of intensity for this tropical low or tropical cyclone, and it will be a very borderline touch and go case of a tropical cyclone and it probably won't even qualify for a tropical cyclone status because it will struggle with getting winds over three quarters of its surface area but again we will just have to wait and see with this system uh, but I can give a pretty good forecast right now in terms of land impacts it's going to just be rainfall at this time we're not expecting anything crazy in terms of rainfall over land Thursday Island is going to be receiving probably a further two to three hundred millimeters from this tropical cyclone and most of that will be falling over the next 48 hours um, peak rainfall accumulations over the Gulf of Carpentaria will probably be around six to 800 millimetres considering the storm's very slow motion. But over uh, more populated areas such as Nullanby, Cape Wessel and Groot Island, it's probably only going to be about 50 to 100 millimetres or 150 millimetres at the worst case scenario. So nothing too crazy up there. And then for far north Queensland as well, it looks like the rainfall is really starting to ease off there. Uh, finally, but still maybe around 100 millimetres could be drawn in from the Coral Sea as a result of these storms inflow features uh, which will be developing quite nicely over the course of tomorrow and into this weekend so we'll just have to wait and see with this system as it develops but I'm not expecting this to become a tropical cyclone it does have a good chance but I'm not really seeing it right now in the forecast um, and yes yeah, some significant rainfall could be expected but the majority of it is going to be remaining over open water in the Gulf of Carpentaria so not an awful lot to be worrying about in regards to this tropical low up here which by the way is tagged as tropical low 15 u and if it does get named it'll pick up the name of tropical cyclone robin so we'll just keep an eye out for those names in the weather and in the news as well now shifting focus to the Coral Sea because there is also some interesting activity that's going to be happening uh, there. I was saying that the Solomon Sea is going to be the place to be watching for thunderstorm activity a couple of days ago and my oh my, it certainly is the place to be watching thunderstorm activity. Less so than last night. Last night we threw up some very nice thunderstorms there but they've since started to ease off a little bit but still some pretty good thunderstorm activity covering areas south of the Solomon Islands extending across to Vanuatu. Not quite as far south as New Caledonia but I imagine that it'll be creeping down there throughout the course of today. Nothing too crazy in terms of convection here. It's very disorganized thunderstorm activity, but this is the precursor storms to the next tropical uh, low or even tropical cyclone that could be forming in the Gulf of, in the Coral Sea rather. Now, uh, the Bureau of Meteorology only has a 5% chance of a tropical cyclone developing out of the system, and that is rightfully so. This is going to be a very difficult forecast to be making. I'm not expecting this to become a tropical cyclone at any point in its lifespan, and it's going to be a very messy, almost non-tropical type sort of system with a big trough extending down the Coral Sea, which will have some cyclonic winds rotating around it. In terms of peak wind gusts, you're probably only expecting uh, 60 to 70 kilometers an hour, so nothing crazy there. It will just likely be windy and rainy in the Coral Sea, nothing in terms of tropical cyclone activity. But again, it's certainly something that we should be watching because this tropical low will likely be throwing a bunch of rainfall ashore across the Sunshine Coast and the Gold Coast, or at least it will be spiking some strong thunderstorms which seems to be the case right now yeah some very strong thunderstorms look to be sparked along uh, what looks to be a coastal trough uh, between Rockhampton down towards Lismore including areas such as Bundaberg, Gladstone and Brisbane. Now yesterday there was a whole bunch of rainfall on the forecast we're talking well in excess of 150 or 200 millimeters for a lot of locations that since been backed off pretty significantly especially from the Eastman Bev and the Axis G3 model. The GFS still keeping in with a lot of rainfall here but I wouldn't be so keen as to call this what's actually going to be happening on the forecast considering things can change significantly and both the Axis G3 and the Eastern Mildef which are also fairly reliable models have completely backed off on their rainfall forecast but still an interesting aspect of the forecast to be taking a note of and it looks like Saturday evening into Sunday morning 100 millimeters could be falling along the Sunshine Coast 50 millimeters for Brisbane and a further 100 millimeters for the Gold Coast as well and then locations including Bundaberg up towards Glad and Rockhampton and even up towards Mackay by the looks of things including the whole wide bay area we could be looking at 15 to 50 millimeters or so from heavy shower activity and maybe some non-severe thunderstorms that move through the area as well all driven by a developing tropical low just offshore 
uh, from the Queensland coastline. Um, it's going to be a very hard bet in terms of what becomes a tropical cyclone here or what becomes a chance becoming a tropical cyclone. All I can say is that it's going to be very windy along the Queensland coastline. We're talking peak wind gusts in excess of maybe 65 or 70 kilometers an hour, in fact, up towards 80 kilometers an hour through here. Waves as well will probably be approaching five meters or five and a half meters in some areas. Uh, but yeah, some very big wave heights are possible and also some pretty big swells as well. Uh, throughout the course of this weekend and into early next week. So certainly something worth watching. Um, and it looks like this tropical low activity will slowly start to pull away from the Queensland coastline Monday, drawn by this tropical cyclone. It's going to be developing south of Fiji, which has its energy already in the Coral Sea right now. Uh, it's that thunderstorm activity over the Solomon Sea right now, uh, south of the Solomon Islands. Um, the Axis G3 model also calling for it to become a borderline tropical. I mean, it's a very hard call to call that a tropical cyclone on the forecast models but you get what i'm saying here it does have a chance of becoming a tropical low or cyclone and the gfs has been very confident with it becoming a tropical cyclone at basically every point of its lifespan but it looks like that has since been dropped off from the gfs's forecast and it becomes sort of this east coast low type system this is a very very complicated forecast it's one of the most difficult forecasts that i've seen on uh, windy in the past uh, five years of looking at the weather models over here and on the, on other sites um, so it's a very difficult forecast to make and there's going to be mistakes and there will be changes in this uh, forecast but what i can be saying first certain is for areas between coffs harbour up towards rockhampton expect 100 or 150 millimeters of rain and some fairly gusty winds to start from saturday evening right throughout sunday and the gusty winds will extend into monday and maybe even into Tuesday morning as well. For Norfolk Island and Lord Howe Island as well, expect some pretty gusty winds and some very big seas there as well uh, from this weekend into early or mid next week as well. And for people on New Caledonia and Vanuatu, that's going to be a pretty different um, kind of can of worms, I guess, that's going to have to be looked at because it's going to be a wait and see sort of situation to see if something does actually develop here. We've only just got the first thunderstorms come onto the um, satellite picture right now. So it's probably going to take another 24 hours to give a really good forecast on what's actually going to be happening in the Coral Sea and then down towards Vanuatu and New Caledonia. But right now, it is a very hard sell, this forecast. It's a difficult one to be making. Um, the conditions for Queensland and the Queensland coastline are pretty much set in stone. They're probably not going to change at this time um, and any variations in them will likely be negligible. Um, but in terms of cyclone activity in the Coral Sea or tropical activity there, it's a very difficult forecast and it might just pan out to be something that we kind of just have to wait and see in terms of what happens. Now in terms of other weather around Australia, up in front of Queensland, that heavy rainfall that soaked cans over the past 48 hours has since started to ease off and it looks like they're moving into a more drier phase right now over the next five days or three days at least um, so probably a little bit of a chance to dry out up there and then sort of beyond early next week the rainfall looks to be completely easing off as well so it definitely looks like it's starting to dry out over there which is some good news uh, because they did get a, not an unexpected 300 millimeters but let's just say a very unwelcome 300 millimeters lash the cassowary coastline other weather around the nation includes some cold fronts moving for tasmania and victoria probably in the next five to ten days uh looks like that high pressure system in the great barrier uh not the great barrier reef the greatest Australian bite, that's the one. Uh, that's blocking all the cold front sort of activity uh, throughout the course of this weekend and into early next week. But after that, it looks like it moves on its way. Um, some hot weather for Perth today. I think 34 degrees for Perth uh, today is going to be the expected maximum. Very, very warm indeed for this time of the year. In fact, it's threatening the uh, all time highest temperature for this late into April. Uh, so, yeah, 34 degrees is more, some more very unwelcome heat there. And no rainfall in sight for the lower west and the great southern of western australia which is pretty depressing news because we certainly do need that rainfall but let me tell you some cooler weather is on the way from next monday onwards it's going to be low 20s or high teens especially across the southern part of the nation it will probably be mid to high teens there we're talking sort of 13 to 17 degrees celsius maximum so we're definitely moving into that winter pattern that's for sure in terms of rainfall accumulation there's really nothing on the forecast by the looks of things which is quite sad to see um but yeah 
hopefully some rainfall does start to form in the next 10 days because we really do want to see something and it is depressing driving out into the uh, hills on the Great Dividing Range and just seeing browning off trees. But yeah, that basically does it for this weather forecast. Uh, there'll be more coverage on the Cyclones Extra channel as needed. Make sure you are subscribed. We're closing in on 200 subscribers there and your support on this channel as well has been much appreciated. Uh, thank you so much for watching this video. A special shout out to the channel sponsors. Their name's on screen right now. Couldn't do it without those guys and the list just keeps on growing. We're up to 16 people, I believe, now off the top of my head. And I've now had to uh, make two columns for them. So yeah, the list just keeps on growing and the support just keeps on coming. So thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for subscribing and thank you so much for joining as well and commenting too. And if you haven't already, then please do leave me a weather report for your location. I'd love to hear from you. Uh, and I love reading all of the weather reports, every single video update. But yeah, thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you all in the next storm. Goodbye.